we're Marty's gang. So we're going to talk about 1984, Van Halen's last album with Dave, and a lot of great tracks, and some tracks that maybe aren't so great. Bill, you want to start with the... All right. So we're going to do a worst to first uh, ranking, and then we'll come up, see what, you know, we agree the best tracks. Uh a lot of people out there, they'll they'll rank songs, they'll rank albums, but I haven't really seen anything where they just take one album and break it down. If they do, it's one person's opinion. You got four, so let's see what happens. Uh, we're going to start with the, my last ranked song would be the Instrumental 98, 1984. It's an instrumental. Um, as these guys know, I'm not a fan of instrumentals. I consider them a waste of time. So that would be my ninth, Randy. That is also my ninth because there's no such thing as an instrumental being a good song. So <laughs> that has to be the last. Wow. Uh, so you guys aren't going to be looking at yes songs tonight. No. Uh, no. <laughs> Jason, where do you put 1984? Uh, I would definitely agree that it, it is a weak synthy song and definitely at the bottom of the album. So your ninth? Yep, for sure. Hey, hey. Um, yeah, I have to concur. 1984. I mean, when it comes to instrumentals, I generally agree. Most of them are kind of filler. Um, when, when it comes to Van Halen, Saturday afternoon in the park off of Fair Warning, that that is my favorite in instrumental from Excellent the track. entire catalog. And it also because it features Alex, still. which is kind of yeah. it would still be at the bottom. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, it would still be at the bottom of Fair Warning too, but it's yeah, at yeah. least a half decent instrumental. So yeah, 1984. It and it sounds dated as hell. Like just it sure does. The yeah. 80s kind of synthy sound. So yeah. Okay. My number eight would be House of Pain, just because it doesn't matter how many times I hear it, within three to four minutes, I forget what it even sounds like. Randy? Really? Okay, well, so my ranking for House of Pain is number six on the album. Okay. I don't mind it. I like the guitars on it. Um, I think Dave is pretty awesome on it. The lyrics are a little bit to be desired, but that's okay, too. That's how some Van Halen tunes roll. Um, but yeah, I'm, I've definitely got mine higher than Bill's. Uh, I, would, I would put... House of Pain, probably at number three. Uh, wow. I, I love the syncopation. <laughs> I love the drumming. Uh, as I mentioned before, me and my buddy, we play music together. We work on we worked on House of Pain for six months to turn it into something jazzy. And there is so much in House of Pain that is unique to that track that Van Halen did. I love it. I absolutely love it. I wouldn't not put it anywhere near the bottom. I put it at number two or number three for sure. You're number three. Interesting. Yeah. You're okay. terrible. You're terrible. Uh, I got it at number seven. Um, so I'm close to you guys, Randy. And yeah. But um I would say it's um it's got a unique riff. I I, I like the riff. It's it's a little closer to um sabbath sounding riffs in my opinion and if it were on diver down it would be up to two easily mm -hmm. but um yeah, yeah that's sure. not saying yeah but <laughs> yeah it's there's just too much competition Dude. on 1984 so yeah. yeah yeah for sure that's right all right all right okay moving on my number seven ready for catch some flack on this one girl gone bad again i can hear it and within five minutes i just i'm sorry you know me i love my hooks i love you know, and this just doesn't do a lot for me. Well, I've got that as my number eight. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Wow. I mean, it's, it, again, it, there's so much quality on the album other than the instrumental. That's where it lands for me. It still is a cool track, um, but, you know, it doesn't match up to the rest of them for me. So, for me, Girl Gone Bad is easily the best track on the album. No question. Oh. It, it, it has, Eddie used this type of uh, octave harmonic picking that Lenny Bro devised in the 1970s. 
with with the beginning with the harmonic, it makes it sound like a piano almost. And Girl Gone Bad to me, in terms of Alex's drumming, in terms of Eddie's guitar playing, it is the best Van Halen track ever. There's no question. Oh, ever? It is, That's pretty impressive. Me, Girl Gone Bad is number one period Van Halen song of all time. It is the hardest song to play. It is the most brilliant harmonically structured song that they did. Alex doesn't miss a beat on anything. And Eddie's guitar playing, it cannot be. Dude, dude I, I think being in Winnipeg, your brain's frozen. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm going to let it go. I was actually going to say, I, I see you're wearing prescription glasses, but you got to do something for your ears, man. That's terrible. Take. <laughs> Jobber. Uh, I wouldn't go. I wouldn't make such a, a bold statement as it's the best Van Halen song ever. Uh, but I have it at number four. And a lot of it is similar to what uh, you were saying. I mean, it's like the intro goes from this kind of fast ride symbol, almost bebop type of harmonic thing. And then it opens up into this almost, you know, like Over the Hills and Far Away by Zeppelin. Yeah. Big, big, uh, I you you and then the beat settles into this kind of Zeppelin kind of stompy, you know, type of beat. And it just... All these all these changes in, in just a couple of minutes it, it's pretty amazing and um, but um, beyond that it's once you I don't know it, it gets repetitive afterwards so it doesn't stick with me as much. Okay. Okay. Cool. Cool. All right. Moving along. My number six, Top Jimmy. Um. Yeah, don't got a lot to say about it. It's def <laughs> not in the top five, but it's definitely better than the other ones I've ranked. So that's all I got to say about Top Jimmy. Well, Top Jimmy, I've got it at number seven. Um, I do like the chorus. Uh, again, it's just that the competition is so strong on this album, but I can still listen to it. Listen to it again the other day. I don't get sick of it, but it's not up at the top for me for sure. Yeah, for, for me, Top Jimmy is the uh, third line going to the fourth line almost, you know, like yeah. in, in terms of hockey. It, it, there, there's some good things about it. It's a straight up cool track, but definitely not memorable. Yeah. What number did you give it? I would definitely put it at seven. Okay. Jobber. I put it at six, so same um, for for you guys. Um, I I think I like the story. Isn't it about some lounge singer? I have no idea. Yeah, it is the actually are about some guy that was famous in Cafe Wa or whatever. I always thought it was about Hendrix. Ran. And so that's why you know, oh Jimmy, you're the king. I thought yeah. it was about Hendrix, but um, but no. you, eh, it's a good song. It just it's not. I thought it was about it's Hoffa. not notable. That's all. You thought it was about who rock? No, Jimmy Hoffa. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> he's buried. At, he's buried at the fifty yard line of the Giant Stadium. Yeah. <laughs> all right. My number five, Drop Dead Legs. Uh, that's uh, kind of bridges the gap. It's way better than my bottom four. Not quite like my top four, but uh, I, I I like to change the pace on it. Um, yeah, number five. Oh yeah, that's number five for me too. I, that's where it's starting to split for me because I love Drop Dead Legs. I love the guitar. I love the vocals. It just it just makes me chill out. And the fact that Dave can throw in a Betty Boop reference, <laughs> outstanding. Yeah, I, I agree. And I think Drop Dead Legs has just this awesome guitar intro, and it, it's just it's sort of like Eddie just sits down and plays you know, a riff in his head. And yeah. I love that opening. And it, it it just, it's got this great, and once again, Alex just punches everything so hard. And it's a song that you can't help but really get into the groove on, you know? And, and the yeah, groove, absolutely. The groove in, in Drop Dead Legs is, is great. And as much as it's not my top four, it's it's the best song afterwards, I would say. Yeah, yeah, I, I love it. Like I said, the Betty Boop reference is pretty cool because I don't think many uh, lyricists could do that. If it was Jessica Rabbit, it might have gone up a little higher on my list. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> or the lead singer of Born. Yes, that's right. No, oh, the yeah. second <laughs> one. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm number five too. A warrant, Jenny Lane. Oh, I thought you were going to say Jamie St. James. No, <laughs> love Jamie St. James, but not with warrant. Okay, <laughs> Dauber. Number five. So, uh, really, I love, I, across I love the board. The riff. Yeah, What's that's that? a five. There, yeah. lives are wild. I think it's the only song we're all going to agree on. Is number five is is, is yeah. yeah, dead legs. Yeah, it is. It's a great sure. track. It's got a great, um, again, a great riff. I love the um, there's the harmony, or there's a there's a certain riff in the where it almost sounds like a sitar. Yes, at, at the very beginning, and then and then the drums come in on the flange, do, 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 and I just love that. I don't think I've heard that sound in any other Van Halen song. No, you know what I like more those sound effects. Yeah, that's oh. actually a classic. That was beautiful. That's I thought crazy. I heard that on an unreleased <laughs> Jobber album. <laughs> See, Otto, it was a Jobber demo. It, it was in, a Jobber demo from the early. In 90s. the nineteen eighties, we didn't have instruments. We we had one crappy guitar and some fake drums, and, and we had to like make everything up with our mouths, right? Well, yeah. just, tennis rackets, you know, they take yes. you along. <laughs> tennis rackets yeah. can make make notes at times. <laughs> All right, my number four, hot for teacher. Um, yeah, I don't know. One of the best yeah. videos. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, it's, uh, I'll, I'll say it's probably the sexiest video I've ever seen in my life. It, it's every fantasy we had in, in yeah, for this one. High, right. Like it, if we, we hated school and yeah, love the didn't. high school we went to and we're still all friends because of that high school. But mm -hmm. that era was, especially the eighties was, this it seemed like we were in jail sorry to me kind of like yeah. to a certain extent you know we looked at those things and then hot for teacher video came out and it was like whoa i'm stupid enough at 15 years old or 16 years old that i think that might happen yeah it never well did. and and i love even well, the maybe it does word. now but <laughs> the spoken words give me something to write on man like things yeah. like that i really like Dave yeah, was I the master of that. And didn't didn't JT always have to go to the back of the bus? <laughs> yes, he did. I always did. That's right. Yeah. And uh, there, <laughs> there was, yeah. So uh, I still use I still use that line at work. I don't feel tardy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so Rock, that's Rock, my Rock, number four as well. Okay. Yeah. JT, where did you put it? Uh, I would say, yeah, number four. Uh, wait, hold on. How many more do we have left? You haven't had a number four yet. <laughs> Wait, so hold you're on. good if you want to throw it there. I got Girl Gone Bad at one. I know what my Don't second tell you two. You got House of Pain at three. Right. So you're missing. Uh, you're missing. Jumping on wait. What's that? I'm putting both. Oh, sorry. I'm putting Jump way below it. I'll wait and Panama above it. What does that mean? <laughs> hey, you're confusing us. This is, yeah, this I don't is know what you're why about. we're not involved in math. Why did you not write down your numbers? Sorry, folks. <laughs> because I thought we were going to argue about the solo on Girl Gone Bad for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay, you figure out your number. Jobber. Um, Hot for Teacher, three. Oh, good call. <clears throat> I mean, Can I rate the I love the, I love the intro. <laughs> the intro is very, actually, very hard to play, obviously. Actually, but, you know what? Is awesome and I hate to intro. say it. I it's, hate to say it because you guys are, are musicians and I'm really not. Other than air guitar, I'm really good. I don't like the intro. If that intro was not there, I'd probably have it a little bit higher. Wow. No, that, okay. yes. that's, just, that's like sacrilege in the Van Halen. I just blew your mind. I know that. Wow. Sorry. But so, you know what? I have a Van Halen shirt on, so I think I know more than you guys. So just live wow. with it. <laughs> Moving on to number three, mine is all wait, because you guys know I'm a sucker for ballads and, you know. I, I, yes, I, we do know that. Yeah, and we'll, we'll have the power ballad show for sure. Because, yeah, hell yeah. For sure. Because the, Otto needs to be taken down a couple of steps on, on how great does. power ballads are. But because I will not. say, I'll wait. And is I'll so wait awesome. is not a power ballad. 
That's right. It's not a, no, power, it's not ballad, a power ballad, but it is ballad ish. Yeah, it's ballad, but, ballad esque. <laughs> but I almost put it song. at number two, but I did put it at number three. So just like you, nice number three. Good call. Good call. So I, I would always put I'll wait at number three for sure. And yeah. it is a it is a love song. It is a weird love song, and yeah. we I, I think that me and me and Jobber have talked about it before, and I think me and you, Rock, have talked about it before, is that there is this period about f- five or ten years ago that where a bunch of bluegrass musicians did covers of Van Halen and, and Black Sabbath, yep. and the the cover of All Wait is just, but I think it's a band called um, uh, Dark Horse, or it, it's a band from Tuscaloosa or anything, a, a, a southern band, and they just nail it and they kind of capture the aspect of kind of how creepy it is because it's sort of a song about stalking. Yeah. I'll wait until your love comes down. And Dave's voice in that song is it's restrained. It's not Dave monkey hour, right? Which yeah. used to call it. And he's holding it back and it's watching someone and you're waiting for the right person to be in the position you're going to get to approach them with or whatever. But that's what I, I like about the song. It, it It's kind of like that, the Lisa Dalbello song, um, going to get close. Oh, going to get close to you. Yeah. Uh, at, at, cool. That Queen's right cover. And both of them are super creepy. I think I'll uh, wait no. in that same aspect. See, I'll that's wait. like, uh, like yeah, go really. Ahead. Sorry, go ahead, Jobber. I was gonna say, uh, like every breath you take. Yeah, yeah. By the police yeah. is also a stalking song. You know, yeah. although many people consider it their love song, which is rather ironic. Yeah, yeah. But I'll wait is so to me, anyways. It's so glossy. It's very eighties. I do understand how some it of the hardcore fan, yeah. uh, fans might not like it because there's so much keyboards. And like I said, it just is so glossy. But I kind of like it. Where did you rank it, Jobber? Uh, eight. Yeah. So wow. Holy. <laughs> um, I thought you fell off the table Alabama. on that one. Dude. You know, We're all talking just, like two, threes, fours. What's going on? I, I, I used to like the song. I just can't listen to it anymore. I think the really? keyboard sound is way too dated. Um, it's kind of like a deep purple Hammond organ sound. It just dates it to that particular era. It's really uh, heavy. Also, I think it's yeah. been it was co-written by Michael McDonald. That's there's always been there controversy. Now. There's always controversy about who wrote that that synth line. I think he played on it. I don't think he wrote it, but let me check out the details while you guys continue. Yeah, yeah, yeah like they, I mean, it's I, not a bad never, song. They never lie on think those they, too, right? No, they never do. It's no. It's I think there's a I think there's a law in like from 1974 to 1984 that any song that has a keyboard on it michael mcdonald gets credit i'm not i think so yeah (laughs) but i think i'd love to actually hear that song with with only guitar you should just you should listen if you get a a guitar version of it it'd be awesome probably would be less i think i think you should do a version just playing your bass yeah (laughs) just play your bass That'd be awesome. Okay, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll give that a whirl. Okay, moving on. My number two, Panama. Yes. Now I, number two for me. There you go. Shocker. Uh, awesome video. Kind of. Well, I mean, and Van Halen, at least until Sammy and Gary Sharon took over, always had great videos. So I that's thought, a great video. Rock. I thought there was a rule that Gary Sharon's name can never be brought up again, but. Actually, that should be a well. Rule. No, and if you're talking extreme, because I'm sorry, porno graffiti was a fantastic. Album. No, extreme yeah. sucks. No, they're terrible. No. <laughs> anyways, that might be another show. How bad they suck? <laughs> no, they don't. But anyways, <laughs> JT, where do you got Panama? Number two, of course. Yeah. 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 Like I mean, so love the hair dryer. Love everything on that. Uh, every so because as we've discussed before. I was lucky enough when I was in junior high that the 1984 tour came through Winnipeg in when I was in grade eight. Right. And I got to see 1984 tour live and the Panama song was, yeah, Mike, Michael Anthony's hooked up on a fucking, you know, he's drinking alcohol beforehand or whatever. And they get into it. Panama is just super catchy. 
it was it, it to me it is the aspect of 1984 that captures it perfectly it's fun it's got great guitar it's got great drumming it's got everything that that brings that album to that kind of pasadena california life forward into heavy metal hard rock and just nails it 100 percent. i never feel bad when i hear panama ever yeah nice nice can't get sick of it jobber number one Oh, the quintessential one. Van Halen album or quintessential Van Halen song. Yeah. You could you could practically put that on any one of their previous albums and it would fit perfectly. Yeah. It's yeah, it, I agree. and it's just a tour de force of Eddie's dexterity. I mean, it sure is. It's like and just the upper voicing, going to the harmonics, going into a lick, going into a rhythm mode. It's just so it's so I, seamless. Yeah, and, I, and I, at the same time, it's so catchy. Uh, I, I actually, I love the video is great because I always thought that they actually arrested Dave. Turns out that <laughs> it's completely staged. Of course. Yeah, yeah like most videos. Yeah. 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 Shocker. And, and I think I think Pete, a good point is, me and you, when we were teenagers, nineteen eighty four was already two or three years old, and we started playing music together, and definitely as bass players and noodling around with guitar. It was it was something that we couldn't understand us for me anyways was we couldn't understand how easy it sounded to play and yet how hard it was to actually play. Okay, but you guys can talk about the playing of Van Halen and all that. Yeah, no doubt there that he's great. But that's the Dave show. Panama is the Dave show. It is totally. And that's yeah, why and... it's such a good song, is that yeah. the, the music underneath is subtle. It's not it's not an Eddie massive solo and a giant Alex drum solo. Yeah. It's Dave's performance and the lyrics and, and the way he performs it. It is kind of a way that Van Halen wasn't over the top, yeah. subdued, but yet completely consistent trying or, you know, executing complex music vocally in a great arrangement that really is one of the greatest FM songs of all time, Panama. Yeah. And I was getting back to the video. Yeah. I guess it did fool me, but it, you know, if had that been Vince Neil, that definitely would have been a real arrest footage. That's right. Ouch. <laughs> Poor Vince. <laughs> wow. Yeah, you're right. That's a whole other episode yeah. there. <laughs> all right. My number one. Yeah. It's jump. Um, again, like, you know, we've discussed a lot of Van Halen fans are going to say, hey, well, this dude doesn't know Van Halen because Jump's his favorite, probably like JT there. But uh, I don't know. I love the song, love the video. Uh, it just brings me back to time and a place. And music to me is, it, it is, it's a soundtrack of our lives. And uh, that's one hell of a soundtrack. Jump for me is also number one. I cannot get sick of it. Again, I do understand that the people who are thinking unchained might not like jump but i love it i can't get sick of it i can't get sick of the video especially because they didn't do anything special it was just them kind of dancing around mm -hmm. it still is probably one of my favorite videos of all time it's cool the song is awesome and again i know how great eddie is on the guitar on the keyboards whatever but to me it's all dave all the time and i love it can't get sick of it Wow. Oh, and just quickly before JT goes into a rant, um, plus <laughs> in, uh, in middle school, I did the David Lee Roth splits to jump during a dance and completely split my pants. Um, I don't doubt so that. That's not a great memory, but I remember being young and agile that I actually could do the you David Lee Roth. No, you had no permanent injury because of it, though, right? No, thank God. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. okay. you, you have had kids, so clearly you didn't. So. It's, it's right. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and, and I think that exactly what Otto's saying is that uh, we've had this discussion for a long time, is that... Only about 40 years. It hasn't been that long. Yeah. How old are well, we? Well, in geological yeah. terms, no, it's yeah. not been yeah. long at all. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I, so when, when the 1984 album came out, my buddy who's you know, he's he's been in the musical game for a long time. He was in grade eight home at class with me here in Winnipeg. And he brought the, the cassette tape in and it had a baby smoking. And I'm like, this is going to be a, worse than Diver Down. 
I know what this is going to be about. I don't even like Van Halen anymore. This is grade eight home at class. And he played the opening of Jump. And I was like, no, they're done. This is over. This is the worst song ever. And I don't think I ever got past that. And now, do I love Moog since? Oh, totally. I, I, you, you've got to bury that scar, man. I know. <laughs> But but to me, so when I saw that video and how constructed it was, it was like exactly what you said, Rock, is that the 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 unchained Van Halen was gone. Yeah. And now it's the 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 the, the MTV Van Halen. And now it's yeah. the FM rock Van Halen. And that is what made me not like that song. Even though yeah. like I can go through it right now and tell you it is a brilliant song. It totally yeah. brilliant. I love Eddie's keyboards on it, every, but it's not Van Halen to me. And that has always been the thorn in my side with that track. And it is the second last song on this album for me, other than the 1984 intro. And it always will be. And I'm not, it's, if I compare it to music today, it's genius. It's amazing. It's incredible. I'm comparing it to Van Halen. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay, Jobber. Uh, number two. I mean, just it's just too infectious, and I, I wouldn't want to listen to it every day. But every time it comes on, it just you can't help but just tap, you know, tap your toes and snap your fingers. It's just such a great, upbeat, happy song, and it has all the elements. It has Dave's. I mean, if Sammy were singing over it, it would just be about something gushy like love. I mean. Dave yeah, puts exactly. a whole different spin on it. It would be more about holding hands at the oh, park and stuff like that and all that garbage. There we go. But I vaguely remember Bill and I um, recreating the video quite a few times on some drunken nights. So <laughs> if we ever come up with video with that, I'll make sure to send it off so you guys can upload it. Because that is, would be gold. The, the video yeah. kicks will be awesome, <laughs> Rock. Because we did... We did jump a lot back in the day, and I'm sure we did Yankee Rose quite a few times too. That's oh, cool. The buttless chaps. Yeah. Well, I still I got them. I'm pretty sure that uh, Otto can pull off some of those sometimes. Yeah. He's, he's got yeah, some good glutes going. Not on. anymore. <laughs> not anymore. Very interesting though. I, Yankee Rose attempts to recreate jump in the, the video in a lot of ways, yeah, and it it's does. interesting in yeah. its own way, but it doesn't quite get. He, it's it's Dave too unrestrained. Yeah, yeah. There, weren't any, there weren't any adults in the room saying, you know, <laughs> let's pull this back a little, you no. know. Yeah. No, yeah. it's it's uh it's it's a Belvo moment. So did you tally those up, Rainbow? All right. So we've got from worst to first on Van Halen's 1984 album. We have in ninth place, 1984, eighth place, top Jimmy, seventh, House of Pain, six, drop dead legs. Fifth, Girl Gone Bad. Fourth, All Wait. The bronze medal goes to Hot for Teacher. The silver would go to Jump. And the gold medal would go to Panama. Oh. I like it. There you have it.